The 2022 World Cup cycle is officially over for the U.S. men's national team, and that means it's time to reassess the coaching situation for the 2026 World Cup cycle. Now, Greg Berhalter could potentially stay on with his second cycle for the World Cup, or as a lot of fans are hoping for, we could have a brand new coach for the U.S. men's national team. However, Whenever it comes to discussing coaches, there is just so much stuff that is like very far from reality. And by reality, I'm talking about um, financially feasible. So today, we're going to take a look at the finances for U.S. soccer. We're going to take a look at the finances for a lot of the coaches um, in world soccer and in, in club world soccer and discuss what is really feasible for a potential next coach for the U.S. men's national team. All that and more on this episode of The Anchor Report. What's up? My name is Sam. This is The Anchor Report, a show about all things American soccer. And today, we're talking coaches. If you're into that, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. If you want to support the channel on the next level, you can become a member. Being a member directly supports the channel. Shout out to my tier two members. I'm shouting them out here because I forgot to shout them out in my last video. So you're double dipping in this one. Manuel Alvarez, Matthew Doyle, Matthew Hanna, Michael Baker, Dan McVeigh, Mike Irish, Aaron M., and 426. Seven Motorsport LLC. Thank you guys so much for being tier two members of the Yank Report. Now, before we get into how much Greg Berhalter actually earns as a U.S. Men's National Team head coach, let's hear a word from this week's sponsor. Football is back and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. So with Greg Berhalter potentially on his way out as head coach of the U.S. Men's National Team, a lot of people are speculating on what could happen next, who could potentially be the next coach of the U.S. Men's National Team. Can U.S. go out there and get their uh, world-class head coach or, or what even world-class means? Um, there's a lot of people who want a European-based coach. There's talk about potential MLS coaches. Let's take a look at, at what really the options are for the U.S. soccer moving forward. And, and let's start by addressing what Greg's salary is. Uh, so Berhalter's salary at the time of U.S. Soccer's 2021 tax filings was just under $1.3 million, making him the organization's highest paid employee. Uh, so remember when we're looking at all these um, all these figures for coaches' salaries, it's all going to be like a year, at least a year in the past, just because that's how uh, tax filings work. So keep that in mind. These aren't going to be up to the date statistics, but I think that they give us uh, a pretty good barometer of what's going on in those departments. So Greg is making about $1.3 million. So I think it's safe to assume that the next coach will be making around $1.3 million. And that gives us just a baseline of where we can start looking for coaches. Now, I know that there's a lot of people out there who are going to be saying, but Sam, but Sam, Jurgen Klinsmann made a lot more than that. And that's true. Jurgen Klinsmann was making a lot more than that. Uh, when Jurgen Klinsmann was hired in 2011, he was actually making $2.5 million, which is significantly more than Greg Berhalter is making now. It was also significantly more than what former coach uh, Bob Bradley was making. Bradley was earning $818,000 per year, um, which is uh, a lot less than two. 2.5 million and also less than 1.3 million. So U.S. soccer went up way high on Klinsman's salary and went back down to Greg Berhalter's. And, and Klinsman didn't just stay at 2.5. He actually earned more and more each year he was the head coach. By 2014, he was earning $3.2 million, um, which was a 28% increase over the previous cycle. Uh, so he was making a significant amount of money. But we can kind of begin to account for that because at that time, Jurgen Klinsmann was actually the technical director of U.S. soccer, and he he held a few different positions. And since then, uh, U.S. soccer has changed the way that it's actually structured. So they brought on... Um, Ernie Stewart as the sporting director and Ernie Stewart serves as the uh, he's essentially the uh, athletic director or general manager or sporting director, whatever terminology you want to use over both the U.S. men's national team and the U.S. women's national team. So we have a point person over both of them. And we have uh, created general managers of each of those teams. So Brian McBride is the uh, general manager for uh, the U.S. men's national team. 
and Kate Markgraf is the general manager for the uh, women's national team. We can also see that the supporting staff for Greg Berhalter is pretty significant. Um, when we have a number of assistant coaches, a goalkeeper coach, a, a scouting coach, a performance expert, a movement coach, a set piece coach. That set piece coach definitely got a lot of attention during the World Cup. Uh, but anyway, we can see that the uh, salary pool for the U.S. men's national team head coach is pretty significant. It's probably somewhere in the ballpark of that three million dollars Jurgen Klinsmann was getting. But it's broken up over uh, the two administrators and Ernie Stewart and Brian McBride and that large coaching staff. So keep that in mind when we're talking about the salary pools. Uh, speaking of those uh, administrators, we can see how much they're actually getting paid. So let's see, starting with Ernie Stewart. Ernie Stewart, the sporting director in charge of both the men's team and the women's team, is making $825,000 per year. Kate Mark Graff is making uh, just over $500,000 per year. Now, she's the GM of the women's team, but she also pulls double duty as the commissioner of the NWSL. Um, her counterpart, Brian McBride, is just the, the GM of the men's team, so he makes... Uh, $369,000 per year. Uh, so you can see that a lot of the salary base for the U.S. Men's National Team is going towards these administrators. But that sort of gives us this base idea of where we're at salary-wise. With Greg Berhalter, we're 1.3. Um, I know there's a lot of fans who who want U.S. soccer to go out there and splurge on, on a coach and maybe spend like $10 million or something like that and, and lure in this big-name coach. But I think it's worth noting, um, and, and maybe people will push back on this, but I think it's worth noting that one thing hanging over the heads of U.S. soccer for the last – a uh, decade or so has been the issue between the men's team and the women's team, or at least U.S. soccer and the women's team about compensation, but not only compensation, but also how much money is being directed to the men's team versus the women's team. Um, things of like accommodations for the women, per diems for the women, facilities for the women. Um, so I have a feeling that if U.S. soccer went out there and spent a huge, made a huge significant increase to the amount that the men's team coach got paid somewhere something upwards of five million to ten million dollars uh the women's team would be very upset about that and we would be right back where we were maybe five years ago um where the women were in the press every day being upset about u.s soccer i think that that looms over this a bit um and i don't expect u.s soccer to make a significant increase in the amount that they're paying the men's head coach for that reason. But I think it does beg the question of, of where does U.S. soccer's salary for a head coach rank amongst uh, the top international teams in the world? Let's check out how much World Cup coaches are actually being paid. Um, so we can see that Greg Berhalter is actually number 13 on the list of World Cup head coach salaries. Uh, at the top of the list is going to be Hansi Flick of Germany. No surprise there. Hansi Flick was the head coach over at Bayern Munich. He won the treble over there a couple of times. He was the European coach of the year, the German coach of the year, um, had all the success at Bayern Munich, probably took a pay cut to get to 6.5 million euros to be the German head coach. But even for all the greatness of Hansi Flick, uh, Germany were not able to get out of the group stage, which kind of goes to show that regardless of how much money that you pay your coach, like the, the amount that you pay your coach does not have a significant impact on, on where they're finishing in the table. And I think we can explore that with a bunch of these teams here. Um, but to be fair to Germany, they probably deserve to get out of the group. Uh, they just... They, they had some injuries right before the tournament, um, particularly at the striker position. They couldn't score goals. They were creating a lot of chances. They couldn't convert them. And thus, they were out of the tournament early. Uh, but uh, Hansi Flick is way up there at 6.5 million euros. Gareth Southgate is behind him at 5.8. Then there's a pretty significant drop off to Didier Deschamps, the uh, World Cup defending champion coach at 3.8 million euros. Uh, and then it, it slowly starts to decrease. I think some interesting names on this list are going to be Number five, uh, Louis Van Hall is a, is a name that a lot of Americans have said that they'd love to have Louis Van Hall as the head coach of the U.S. Men's National Team. He's sitting at 2.9 million euros. Uh, remember, we're, we're kind of converting euros to dollars back and forth throughout this video, so keep that in mind. Uh, Greg Berhalter is sitting at uh, 1.25 million euros. So in order to pay Louis Van Hall without him having a significant pay decrease, U.S. soccer would have to double the the salary, more than double the salary being allotted to head coach at the moment, which I don't know. I I, I maybe 
maybe you could see it getting as high as like 2 million euros, but that's that seems like a significant increase to the salary. We'll see what, what happens ultimately, but that seems uh, interesting. Another interesting thing is uh, Tata Martino, the head coach of Mexico, uh, is getting paid the same amount as Louis van Hall at 2.9 million euros. So some other interesting names on this list. If you go all the way down to number 26, you'll find the Canadian head coach, John Herdman, who kind of became a fan favorite within U.S. men's national team circles. Um, he's sitting at 480,000 euros. Uh, so if he became the head coach of the U.S. men's national team, you'd see a significant increase in his salary uh, compared to what he's making now. So it seems like he would be very much interested in the job if it was offered to him. Though at the same time, it seems like um, one of the reasons why U.S. soccer hired Jurgen Klinsmann and then Greg Berhalter after them was chasing after this uh, elusive, attractive style play of soccer. And that's not really what John Herdman is known for. He seems a little bit more in line with what we were seeing with Bob Bradley all those years ago with sort of the bunker encounter mentality. But who knows, man? Maybe John Herdman uh, comes to the U.S. men's national team and with the players that he has available is able to play some really attractive soccer. Um, and, and, And this is all a moot point anyway. But it's still interesting to see how much he's actually getting paid relative to some of the other people on the list. It's also interesting to look at this list, knowing what we know now, how uh, the amount the, the the coaches pay correlates to where the team finished in the uh, World Cup. Like we know the Senegal got to the round of 16 and their coach is uh, down at number 31, the second lowest paid coach uh, in the World Cup. Uh, let's see, who else? Poland at number 25, uh, paying their coach half a million euros a year, actually got to the round of 16. Croatia's head coach. Uh, he is number 24 on the list at uh, 550,000 euros per year. Uh, so that's pretty damn low on the list. Uh, so there's a number of coaches who made it to the round of 16 and beyond who are, are not making more than a million dollars. Uh, and then there's another number of coaches who were near the top of the list who failed to get their team very far in the World Cup at all, which is kind of interesting. I think one thing that we should absolutely point out uh, here is that right below Greg Berhalter, Greg Berhalter's at number 13 on the list at 1.2 million euros, 1.250 million euros, excuse me, is Roberto Martinez, the head coach of Belgium. He's actually at number 14 on the list at 1.2 million euros. Um, Roberto Martinez is a coach that a lot of American fans are interested in. Um, I, I think he definitely brings that Euro manager clout that so many American fans are interested in. He has experience coaching in the EPL. And of course, he's been at the helm of um, this much heralded Belgian national team for a number of years. Um, Maybe hasn't gotten the results that the Belgian fans have wanted. But if you look at it, He's making the same amount of Greg as Greg Berhalter is right now, and he's also a free agent. So it would make a lot of sense that Roberto Martinez is at least on the short list of, of coaches that uh, U.S. soccer could see re- replacing Greg Berhalter. It makes a ton of sense. Now, speaking of Greg Berhalter, one of the interesting things in all of this is what he sees as his future. Um, if Greg Berhalter wants to retain his position as U.S. soccer head coach, or does he want to explore opportunities in Europe or MLS or something like that? Uh, so let's take a look at, at maybe what some of his options are. First, by looking at MLS. Now, remember, Greg is making uh, $1.3 million per year American money. Uh, looking at MLS salaries, You can see that there's a lot of coaches not making nearly that amount of money. And of course, this list is is a few years old, uh, but still, it gives us a great barometer. Like Josh Wolf at Austin FC is on 200K, probably got a raise after his exploits this season. uh, But that's still just not a lot of money compared to what Greg Berhalter is making right now. Um, Let's see. uh, Tab Ramos who's no longer a coach at Houston Dynamo FC, but he was making uh, 500K per year. Uh, Kayla Porter, who's no longer the coach at Columbus Crew, was making 350K. The second part of the list actually shows some of the higher paid coaches in MLS with Phil Neville making a million dollars a year for Inter Miami and Bruce Arena, the highest paid coach in MLS, at least at the time this, this list was a uh, released at 1.2 million. So even with, with Greg sitting at 1.3 million right now, he, if he returned to MLS and just maintained his current salary, he would automatically become the highest paid coach in MLS, at least as it pertains to when this list was made. Maybe that's not necessarily the truth right now, but it just goes to show that 
if Greg decided to go back to MLS, he's probably taking a significant pay cut, which is something that not a lot of us are interested in doing whenever we change jobs. Usually whenever we change jobs, we want to be making at, at least the same amount, if not more. So it kind of gives us some idea of, of what his options are moving forward. It also shows us that if U.S. soccer is interested in taking on an MLS head coach uh, for the next coach of the national team, we really have our options open here because for the majority of these coaches, the U.S. men's national team job would be life-changing money, maybe tripling the salary um, for, for a lot of these coaches. The average pay for MLS head coaches is estimated to be $320,000 per year. Coaching legends like Bruce Arena and former international stars like Phil Neville are raking in over a million each year. It's also fair to say, I believe uh, Thierry Henry was making over a million dollars whenever he was coach um, uh, in MLS as well. So it, a lot of it has to do with what your name is. So maybe Greg has that kind of weight where he can pull over a million dollars, but it probably won't be, if anything, it won't be a significant um, increase into his salary. So it gives us some insight that maybe uh, staying as a U.S. men's national team head coach is in Greg's best interest right now. Maybe not necessarily U.S. soccer's best interest, but Greg's. Now, there's also reports that um, there are some European uh, teams out there interested in, in Greg Berhalter. Uh, let's take a look at some European leagues. Uh, the EPL, first of all. I think we knew this, uh, that, that Pep Guardiola was going to be top of the list, but Pep Guardiola is making 20 million euros per year. Jurgen Klopp is right behind him at 15 million per year. Uh, Antonio Conte at 12 million per year. Uh, Thomas Tuchel was only making 10 million per year, which is interesting considering that you know he he came over from PSG and he was coaching for Roman Abramovich and they they won the Champions League and all that. Uh, but it, it does give us some insight into how much these uh, EPL coaches are actually making. When we get towards the bottom of the list, uh, we see Jesse Marsh. He's at $3.5 million coaching for Leeds, which is is more than double what Greg Berhalter is making right now. I know Jesse Marsh is a coach that a lot of fans would love to see as coach of the men's national team. Uh, you know, he was a player on the national team. It makes a lot of sense. But does it make sense for Jesse Marsh to leave the EPL, potentially, to leave the EPL to make significantly less money than he's making right now to be the head coach of the U.S. men's national team, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe the USMNT is like, okay, for Jesse Marsh, we've got $5 million, but I don't know. I I don't know. I mean, Dean Smith, whenever he was coaching Norwich, was making uh, $1 million per year, so that's in our ballpark for sure. Uh, Interesting, Graham Potter. Graham Potter, who's the current coach of Chelsea, back before he made the move, was only making $1.25 million. So he's likely got a massive increase in salary uh, moving from uh, his team at the bottom of the league over to Chelsea. So that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at La Liga because it's, it's really interesting. I know a lot of you may be thinking that Pep Guardiola is the highest paid coach in the world, but not even close. For some reason, Diego Simeone at Atletico Madrid is making 37 million euros per year. That is absolutely insane. 37 million euros per year. That is over 15 million more euros per year than Pep Guardiola. That is astounding. It is pretty wild considering that Atletico Madrid are, are, are the third best team in, in Spain. And you consider like, what if what if they paid their coach $10 million a year, had like a Thomas Tuchel as their coach and, and took the other uh, $25 million and put it towards their salaries to get a little bit closer to Real Madrid and Barcelona, close that gap a little bit. Now, to be fair, 25 million euros wouldn't significantly close the gap between Real Madrid and Barcelona when it comes to overall club spending. But you could buy a few. You could buy a few pretty good players with that amount of money. Uh, pay some pretty decent salaries for that amount of money, and it's just absolutely wild to me that he makes this much. Uh, but what we also see is uh, Barca and Real Madrid are sitting over ten million dollars for their coaches. When we go further down the table, we don't have a lot of information on the La Liga coaches, but uh, we can see that they're. At least the upper end, probably mid-tier of the table, they're going to be making a little bit more than what Greg Berhalter is making right now. And then if we over if we take a look over at the Bundesliga, which is generally known for like reasonable spending, we see uh, Julian Nagelsmann's making $10 million per year over at Bayern Munich. Uh, Marco Rosa's making $7 million. Uh, let's see, 
Pellegrino Matarazzo, who is currently not coaching right now, he got sacked from Stuttgart and is uh, just uh, floating in the abyss right now in, in, in the coaching free market. A, a guy that a lot of people have pointed to as a potential U.S. men's national team head coach. He's making three million euros a year, uh, which is uh, fairly close to what Jesse Marsh is making. Uh, once again, more than what Greg, more than double what Greg Berhalter is making right now would represent a massive increase in in, in spending for U.S. soccer should they go after someone like Pellegrino. Though Pellegrino checks a number of boxes, um, there's a lot of folks who want to see an American manager managing the U.S. men's national team, and Pellegrino is certainly American. There's a lot of folks who want to see a European manager uh, managing the U.S. men's national team, and Pellegrino, though he's American, has been managing in uh, Europe all of his life and really has that flavor of a European manager. I don't know that he has the clout Necessarily, it's not like he's been managing these um, high-flying Champions League squads. So Pellegrino Matarazzo would be a really interesting name if U.S. soccer should decide to start spending that kind of money. But I think this kind of gives us an idea of the reality of where the salaries and the financials are for the future coach of the U.S. men's national team relative to how that stacks up against teams in Europe. I mean, we're looking at in top five leagues. We're looking at really bottom of the table type coaches uh, to get that kind of salary. If we want to get more a mid-table European top five league coach, you probably have to double that salary. And if you wanted one of the upper end Champions League coaches, it would be a significant, significant increase to the salary in order to to lure one of those guys in, which I just don't think is very likely considering um, the last 10 years of, of, uh, of U.S. soccer discourse and how that's played out uh, in the press regarding uh, U.S. soccer spending to the men versus the women. It just doesn't seem all that likely to me. So with all that being said, who are the most likely candidates for the future head coach of the U.S. men's national team? Well, I think Roberto Martinez makes a lot of sense. He's available and the best ability is availability. And he makes more or less the same amount of money as Greg Berhalter does right now. He has the European clout, which will appease a majority of the fan base. Um, And he's an outsider, which I think will appease a majority of the fan base. So that makes a lot of sense. Pellegrino Matarazzo is an interesting one. He's also out of a job right now, so he is available. Um, I I don't know what his salary requirements are right now. That one would be a really interesting one. I think Jesse Marsh is probably a bridge too far um, considering his salary, but also the prestige of coaching in in the EPL and sort of where his career trajectory is right now. Uh, It seems like a step backwards to head back to the, to us men's national team. Maybe if in a few months, uh, Jesse Marsh loses his job and he can't find another job on that level, maybe that changes things a little bit. Uh, But that also speaks to another idea that's out there, which is maybe Greg Berhalter remains on for a few months uh, or, or maybe another year considering um, I, I don't know if the best time to hire his replacement is uh, during the middle of the European season. It seems like it would make a lot more sense to wait until the end of the European season where some uh, coaches might come available. Caleb Porter is an interesting name in MLS that is currently unattached. Um, that was a rising star in the coaching ranks of U.S. soccer, was a U.S. Uh, youth coach, uh, U.S. men's national team youth coach at one point. So um, he, he does have some experience with coaching national team. So now I've sort of purposely skirted around discussing like quality of coach uh, whenever we're talking about the next U.S. uh, men's national team head coach. I know that's a big point of contention for a lot of people. Um, And for a lot of people, uh, there's a superstar coach out there that's going to come into the national team and and make the whole team better uh, for a, a considerable period of time which is just something that I just don't agree with. I don't think it's something that we see um, in in international soccer or even uh, club soccer for that matter. You see coaches maybe can can get some decent results over a a short period of time, but for extended periods of time, um, it's not really something we see. I don't think that the team is going to change very much regardless of which coach we hire until the, the quality of talent gets better. Even if the U.S. men's national team somehow hires Pep Guardiola, who's widely regarded as as the greatest coach in soccer right now and the greatest coach of his generation, if all of our good players get injured and our talent is not very good, then it's probably going to limit how good our team can be, even with such a class manager. Um, On the flip side, if our team starts producing a lot more players at the Champions League level, like we've seen with Adams, McKinney, Pulisic, Reyna, if we continue 
producing players at that level and we can fill in our lineup and and actually have a lineup that is um, on the level with some of these uh, quarterfinal teams on the level with someone like Netherlands or Croatia or somebody like that, um, then I, I think we can actually get to those levels. At, at this point right now, I, I don't think a coach is going to be able to bridge that gap and make all of our players better. So really, I, I don't have a big dog in the fight. I think any number, any one of these coaches that we mentioned so far would be fine. Even if we got like John Herdman and started playing um, a little bit more of aggressive counterattacking soccer, I think that would be fine too. Um, it, 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 to me, it's all about the quality of the players that we're able to put on the field and the quality of development and just continuing to uh, develop these players that are able to play at the highest level. That's going to be our pathway to success. It's not going to be some magical manager that kind of comes down riding a winged horse and suddenly turns our uh, like 16th best roster in the world into a semifinal roster. You know, It just doesn't really work like that. So there you have it. Let me know who you think should be the next coach of the U.S. men's national team. Uh, were there some names out there that I didn't mention that you, you think would be interesting ideas? What do you think about looking at the financial situations and seeing how much these guys actually get paid? Were you surprised at how much some of these coaches get paid? Uh, how much the MLS coaches get paid? Certainly how much Diego Simeone gets paid. That guy's agent is is living right. Uh, guys, let me know in the comments section. I know I'm going to get comments like U.S. soccer is America is the biggest country in the world. We should be paying a billion dollars to our coach. I, I know I'm going to get that comment, but I just don't see, see it happening. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for putting up with my voice, which is gone because of whatever illness I'm dealing with right now. As always, si puede hablar espanol, dime un comentario en espanol. If you want the Yank Important Podcast form, you can find it anywhere podcasts are podcasted. Uh, thank you to my tier two members. Let's shout them out again. Manuel Oliveras, Matthew Doyle, Matthew Hanna, Michael Baker, Dan McVeigh, Mike Irish, Aaron M, and 427 Motorsport LLC. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is the Yank Report brought to you by Bet Online.